Drop window. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. I, I just, it's so good, isn't it? Because uh, for those of you who've been on the journey of uh, Boston Community Church, uh, as I have been with, with the church, I'm right back into the front room, wasn't yeah. it, where we all started. I think this is the fifth venue now we've been in. <laughs> Lost count. Hey. Lost count. <laughs> Incredible, isn't it? And it's a good to actually have a home. You know, to have a place of belonging. And, uh, and it's great to see what God's been doing over this period of time. It's good to see how the Lord is working and uh, establishing his his kingdom on the earth and working in people's lives and changing lives from glory to glory and impacting hearts and impacting individuals. There's something very wonderful about uh, that wonderful name of Jesus. We've been uh, singing that, I remember I just want to speak the name of Jesus. And uh, the more we speak the name of Jesus, the more we actually are impacted by that name. And that's the wonderful truth that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Praise God. And uh, all he actually looks for are, are folk that are wanting to be impacted by him. The Holy Spirit is a perfect gentleman. He won't uh, force himself on people. He'll wait until folk come to find him, open up the heart to him. The moment any heart begins to open up to Jesus, it's, he's there, he's there, right there, immediately, bringing life and freedom and deliverance and healing and grace, praise God. Uh, this morning I want to refer to a, a very well-known passage of scripture, actually. It's in, uh, it's in Luke um, chapter 9, and it's a time of the feeling of a group of people, uh, <coughs> 5,000 folk, uh, just one or two points thoughts about this, that uh, there were 5,000 people and 5,000 men, excluding the men, the women and the children. Uh, they've been following Jesus all day. But let's pick the story up uh, in Luke 9 and verse 12. When the day began to wear away, or in the evening if you like, the twelve came and said to him, send the multitude away that they may go into the surrounding town and country and lodge there and get provisions. For we are in a deserted place here. He said, you give them something to eat. They said, well, we have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless we go and buy food for these people. And there were about 5,000 men and he said to his disciples, make them all sit down in groups of 50. They did so and made them all sit down. He took the five loaves and two fish and looking up to heaven, he blessed them, he broke them, he gave it to them, to, to the disciples, to set before the multitude and they all ate and were filled and 12 baskets of the leftover fragments were taken up by them. You know, I don't know about you, but sometimes when you've been a Christian for, for many, many, many years and you've heard many, many, many accounts and you read the Bible and you've sat under many, many, many sermons, <coughs> sometimes it's easy to miss the significance. See, first to think, oh, yeah, I, I know about that. Oh, I know about Jesus feeding the... But just stop and think for a moment. 5,000 people, they were all full, they couldn't eat any more, the type of meal that I like, couldn't eat any more, and there was an abundance left over. You know, God is never the God of just enough. Hallelujah. Think about that for a moment. God isn't the God of just enough. Well, well that's, that'll do, that's okay. No, 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 God is a God of abundancy. God is a God of blessing. If only we could come to the place of recognizing that. And, um, you know, this miracle is incredible. Uh, all miracles are incredible. For those of you who have been wonderfully born again, that was a miracle. Amen. Amen. Yeah, amen. It was incredible. One moment you were outside the kingdom of God, the next moment you heard the Holy Spirit speak to you, spoken about the name of Jesus, his great grace, his love, 
your salvation and something inside your heart went yes I need to know Christ and the moment you open up your heart to Jesus there wasn't one of those moments like well co come back next week come back next month the moment you opened up your heart to Christ in that moment a miracle took place and you were wonderfully born again of the Spirit of God. You know, the Bible says that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his purpose only. That's his only purpose in life to steal, kill, and destroy. And I often think to myself how many people I know actually um, are really having life stolen from them, joy stolen from them, hope stolen from them. Folk who actually feel they're not good enough, folk who feel they're not able enough. One guy came to me recently and says, okay for you, Matt. I said, why, why, why is that then? He said, well, he said, you're okay. I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, I'm not. I said, well, okay, well, tell me more. He said, I'm not good enough for God, am I? I'm not good enough. As you're misreading it, mate, as you're misreading it altogether, nobody is good enough for God. We've all sinned, we've all fallen short of God. And when you receive Christ, the miracle takes place. I've seen addictions broken, I've seen bodies healed, I've seen people restored, I've seen families restored in the name of Jesus. When people open up their heart to Christ, so this is a great miracle. 5,000 people uh, wonderfully fed. But you know, all miracles, all miracles in the Word of God give evidence to that which is natural being impacted by the supernatural power of God. It's when the natural is changed by the supernatural. It's when that which is broken, suddenly the supernatural power of God is evident and it is made whole, praise God. Every miracle in the Bible and every miracle that's ever happened since, over 2,000 years, and there's been many of them, it is when the natural is impacted by the supernatural power of God. It's as simple as that. You can have a broken heart, a broken life, a broken body, broken emotion in the natural and then when the supernatural power of God touches that with his power change happens praise God I listened last week to Mervyn's word yeah well no, I listened to it this week actually and it was great because Mervyn there was speaking about the wind of the spirit and the power of God moving and the noise and there was a a great evidence in the whole of, of Jerusalem of the glory of God, the anointing of God, the power of God. And the crowd came together and he spoke passionately about the need to be filled with the Spirit of God and the power of God. And let the Holy Spirit work and let the Holy Spirit move. And I believe with all of my heart that it is possible for all those in Christ to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I believe that passionately. I know, I know, I know. I meet some and they say to me, I don't want to be, thanks man. I don't want, I don't want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm quite happy where I am. Well, that's really, I just want to say in the nicest possible way, it's not about you. <laughs> not really about you, it's about the fact that it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. And there's Jesus working in you, Jesus working through you, and it's, it's all about them. I believe it's possible for everyone to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And there isn't a church leader I know, or maybe one or two, <laughs> who wouldn't want his church members to be filled with the Holy Ghost. There isn't a church member I know that doesn't want to see the signs and wonders and people blessed and people being transformed by the anointing and the power of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, the impact of the Lord can have upon our lives. 
And I believe, and I do believe, and there may be some here today, I really do believe that there are Christians who really want a greater expression of the Holy Spirit in their lives and working through their lives. Am I right or not? Amen. Two. Am I right? Do we not want more of God? Do we not want more of the Spirit of God? Do we not want to begin to see the signs and wonders and miracles that Christ can do? Do we want to see people coming in here with great needs and going, those needs being met? So the feeding of the 5,000, that miracle, I want us to go on a bit of a journey this morning to learn something about that. Where individually and collectively together we can begin to see miracles, begin to see signs and wonders, begin to see the power of God work, begin to see the anointing of the Holy Spirit changing lives over and over and over again. It's a part of my journey. I've been saved now for a long, long time, filled with the Spirit, long time. I want to see even more in my own heart. I want to see more in my own life, see more in my own work, see more in my own ministry. I haven't arrived yet. There's a lot more yet, praise God. Amen. So let's begin, shall we? There's, there's a situation, isn't there? A crowd found out that Jesus was in Bethsaida. So they all arrived, they all turned up. Jesus welcomed them. He taught them all about the kingdom of God. He healed all those who needed to be healed. Hallelujah. Say 5,000 people. He taught them all about the kingdom of God and began to heal all their sicknesses and all their diseases. You know, I believe with all my heart that when Jesus is present, people come. When people begin to see the miraculous in Christ, they begin to turn up. I've known it over many years. I've known people who've been wonderfully touched and healed by Jesus. They shared their word, they shared their testimony, and suddenly other people want to come, they want to know more about this Jesus Christ. When people say church is boring, dead, uninteresting, I don't want that to be true. I want to be full of life and purpose and excitement and change and dynamics in God. Hallelujah. Praise his name. There's a crowd out there still waiting for reality. There's a crowd out there still broken. There's a crowd out there still looking for answers. There's a crowd out there don't know what the world is all about. Fearful, worried, anxious and concerned. Looking for answers somewhere. And so they've been with Jesus all day. It's now late. The disciples are aware that they need feeding and they need rest. As far as the disciples are concerned, it's time to close the meeting. Time to close the meeting, it's time to send them home, time to get rid of them. It's late. But there's a certain amount of compassion there. But there's a beautiful picture, isn't there, about the crowd not wanting to leave? Because they didn't know what was going to happen next. When Jesus was in the house, they didn't want to go because they thought, well, we may, we may miss something. Not wanting to rush away because Jesus is in the ascendancy. Isn't that a wonderful picture? Isn't that a beautiful picture? Yeah. God's moving in such a way, nobody knows what's going to happen next. I'm not going, I don't, I'm not going home. I'm not going to go stay here because I believe Jesus is doing exceedingly abundantly more than I could ever imagine or think possible. We haven't quite got there somehow, or we've lost it. I was in Wales in, uh, what was I? I was in one of the churches in Wales. <laughs> The Pontypool, Tony Lavo, I'm not too sure which one it was. I was having a meeting, and you know, it, it was like the first meeting on a Sunday. I was going to be there for nine days. I think the first meeting, you know, sometimes, you know, I, I, can, I can be honest with you, can I? I can be totally honest yeah. with you. You know, sometimes the first meeting at the beginning of an outreach, you, you feel like you're trying to raise the dead. <laughs> 
good business at all. And, and, and you're preaching on my head, and in, in your heart, you say, Lord, come on, Lord, I'm here for nine days, come on, come on, you know. But there's no reactions anywhere. And I got five to twelve, and there's two ladies at the front. I said, somebody here, somebody really needs a touch of Jesus in their heart and in their life. You need it this morning. And these two women stood up. I went, thank you, Lord. So I said, uh, everything okay? They said, yeah, they said, it's, uh, it's 5 to 12, it's time to put the kettle on. <laughs> so what? It was it 5 to 12, it's time to put the kettle on? <laughs> Come on, church. Do we, are we ever like that? Do we ever get to a stage and say, like, oh, come on, we, we, we've been here for 10 minutes. We've been here for, no, no, when Jesus is in the ascendancy and Jesus wants to change lives and Jesus wants to touch lives, we've got to get to a place of saying, okay, God, I, I'm not going to rush away because I believe you want to do something in my life mm -hmm. and do something in my heart. Praise God. Mm -hmm. So the Jesus the disciples, they, they, they came to Jesus, very logical. Take it very naturally. It's late. It's time to go home. Time to send the crowd away. Now Jesus has been teaching them about the kingdom of God. Jesus has been healing everybody who had a need. There is nothing natural about that. Jesus, full of the Spirit, ministering in the power of the Holy Spirit. I want us to try and see something in the natural here. This Jesus now ministering, people are being touched, people are being healed. Jesus is opening up all the treasures of heaven. And the disciples turn up and say, excuse me, it's time to send them home, it's late. <laughs> Jesus began to challenge the disciples' thinking. You see, he was all about making disciples in the kingdom of God. And all the miracles of Christ and everything that Jesus did, there's a lot of teaching in this, in discipleship. Time for making disciples. And we all need training in discipleship. Because we're called to become disciples and not just followers of Christ. And so we come to the solution. They're thinking naturally, and Jesus said, this is the solution, you give them something to eat. Well, the disciples are still thinking naturally. Jesus, there's 5,000 people here. We want to look around, there's some five barley loaves and a couple of fish. So what's that amongst all this lot? How are we going to feed all these people the five body loaves and two fish? Jesus. That ain't going to happen. They're still thinking naturally. And I would say that unless we know the answer to the story, we would all think the same in that situation. Time for some personal application in this room. In this community around here, in my community, there are thousands of people who are in great need. They're hungry, they need salvation, they need healing, they need deliverance, they need freedom. They need a miracle. I meet them, I meet them all the time. I had a phone call a couple of days ago saying, Matt, could you possibly see a young man, he's 29 years old, who uh, he wants to chat, he wants to talk to somebody, he's, he's on the verge of uh, self-harming, suicide. Spoke to a lady online, somebody we knew 40 years ago, who told me that she's continually self-harming and cutting herself. 
spoke to another guy who came to my house two weeks ago. Deep, deep problems, deep, deep needs. I'm meeting people all the time who they're looking for answers. They're looking and saying, Mike, we're hungry for answers, praise God. And Jesus is saying, church, you feed them. You feed them. You move in the supernatural power of God. But the supernatural power of God can touch the natural man and the needs out there. Go and proclaim the kingdom of God with signs and wonders following them. Move in the supernatural wisdom and knowledge of God in the Holy Spirit. <coughs> so even when the Holy Spirit is speaking to us and when we hear those words of Jesus, you go and feed them. Let's be very honest, how many of us would dismiss ourselves and say, who, who am I? among so many. What can I do, God, among so many, amongst all these needs? God, how can I even begin to feed anyone and touch their need in the depths of their heart? But let's see what Jesus is teaching here, shall we? So he begins to teach them through the practical application. He takes the loaves and the fish he looks up to heaven, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples. I want to see something now. That those loaves and fish in the hand of Jesus Christ was miraculously changed by the creative work of the Holy Spirit. Miracle upon miracle. Every time they began to dish it out, every time they began to, suddenly the, it was no longer, it was natural, it looked the same, but it had the anointing of the Holy Spirit's work upon it, which actually created miracle upon miracle upon miracle upon miracle. So what was the process? Let's get something here, church, this morning. He looked up to God. It was the first thing Jesus did. He looked up to God. In John chapter 5, Jesus said this, I can do nothing of myself. As I hear, I judge, and my judgments are just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. That was his very beginning. And Jesus said to the disciples, apart from me, you can do nothing. Just like this bread placed in the hand of Jesus, all must be surrendered to Christ. The beginning, if you like, of our work and mission, the beginning of moving in the supernatural power of God is when we come to a place where we realize that all we can do is to put our lives in the hand of Jesus Christ. We're going to do something in us which is beyond anything we've ever known or experienced in the past. There's something quite incredible about this word, and it is an old fashioned word which isn't preached about nowadays too much about surrendering to Christ. All to Jesus I surrender, all to Him I freely give. It's all about Jesus. Jesus on the mountain, Jesus in the street, Jesus in my family. It's all about Jesus. And you know this, it's not about us. It's not about us. It's all about Jesus. Lifting up the name of Jesus. All about us coming to him simply and saying, Lord Jesus, I just come as I am. I know that I have not nothing in my natural life to give. But Jesus, I give you me. I give you me. 
Whatever way God you want to use me, I I give you me. I surrender me, God, to you. Because apart from you, I, I can't do anything, God. You know, people who want to try and build a ministry, people who want to put their name up in lights, people who want to see themselves as something great and awesome, God will send them away. He takes the foolish of the world to confirm the wise. He takes those who feel they have nothing to actually do exceeding great miracles in them and through them. It's a very beautiful thing to to present our lives to Jesus. And we all need a supernatural touch of Christ to make that happen. And maybe some of us here today, we may look at our lives and go, you know, I have personal needs, I have physical needs, I have family needs, I have emotional needs, I have needs of freedom in my own life. We have to present it to Jesus. You have to come to Christ and say, Jesus, I I bring it to you, God. And if Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, I can do, I only want to do your perfect will, then if that's okay for Jesus, then it's going to be okay for us, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Lord, I just want your will to be done in my life. How often do we present ourselves to Christ? Mm-hmm. Just a thought. We all presented ourselves to Christ when we were born again. We said, Jesus, come into my heart. We, we all did that then. But how often since have we actually presented ourselves to Christ? So Jesus, I surrender this day, God, to you. I surrender my time, God, to you. I surrender my life, God, to you. So Jesus then took the bread and he did something very hard. He broke it. This is my body broken for you. He held nothing back. Following Jesus and surrendering our lives to Christ at times will be very painful because there are times when Jesus will begin to break something in us. Broken. We also sing a song, do we not? Break my heart, Lord, for what breaks yours. To be totally broken. When like Jesus, we recognize that we are crucified in Christ, it's no longer us that live, because Jesus breaks off from us those things that he doesn't want us to hold on to. He wants us to be disciples of Christ. And Lord, I've come to surrender my life totally to you, and you say, that's great, thank you ever so much. I will never begin a process of breaking from you those things that I don't want you to hold on to. I don't want to let that go, God. I don't want to let that go. Somebody said to me recently, because we always have a little bit of a joke, you'll be hearing about me and my golf. <laughs> Somebody said to me recently, man, if God asked you to give up your golf, would you give it up? I said, I, 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 you can buy the clubs. You can buy the clubs. I said, if God said do that, I would do that. So one of the main reasons I'm here playing golf is because you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior. <laughs> That's my mission field, one of my mission fields. Golf is rubbish. But the mission field is good. But church, how much do we honestly look at our lives and go, I would really struggle if Jesus asked me to give that up. Because that's my natural me. I like that. I love that. I like doing that. Sometimes when we look out and see the loss, we see the fearful around us, we see the wounded in the spirit, we see mental illness. 
when we see all those things, I must ask myself the question, who weeps anymore? Who weeps? Who really weeps anymore? For the broken amongst us. I don't get me wrong, I, 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 I love the family of God. I, I, I love our times of praise and worship and adoration. I love the times when we come together I remember distinctly going back a few years now when we, we were pioneering the church that I'm, I'm back in now, actually. I know for a little while we did everything we possibly could to get people in the kingdom of God. We did it all. We had this activity, that activity, this activity. We've done it all. We had everything going. And you know what happened? Nobody came. Nothing happened. And one day I remember distinctly the Lord asked me a question. Are you weeping for the lost? I said, Lord, you're going to have to give me a burden. And he gave me a burden. And I spent many, many weeks on my knees on the cold floor of the church, weeping and weeping and weeping. Totally broken. Absolutely broken. And from that brokenness, God began to bring a little mini, 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 mini revival in the area. And many, many people got saved. It happened out of brokenness. Lord, break for me that which I'm holding on to. Lord, break for me that which you want to break. Break my heart, God, for those that is breaking your heart. Take my life, Lord, and use me to change my world. If that's our prayer, then the Lord will break us from something. You don't want our plans. You don't want our schemes. You don't want our ideas. You don't want our latest thoughts. He wants, he wants us to be those folk and say, Lord, I'm looking up to you. I want to do those things, God, that you want me to do for your glory. Ever notice the principle, God often begins with weeping, and then joy comes in the morning. Mm -hmm. Except the grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains by itself alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. The principle of Christ and the principle of his church. And then finally, Jesus is teaching them this. Out of the position of surrender, and out of the position of breaking, out of the position of putting it into my hand and allowing me to break something, I will then give it back to you. And suddenly the miracle that took place in the bread, you will find will be operating in your spirit. And suddenly they will be moving in the power and the anointing of God in ways that you've never known or ever experienced in the past. Miracle upon miracle, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, the Holy Spirit at work. How often is this surrendering? How often is this breaking? It is every day. But then every day suddenly a miracle takes place deep within and suddenly those disciples, Jesus gave them the bread and they had then to op operate in some faith. Because they had to start giving it out. They had to start distributing it. And as they began to give it out and distribute it, that miracle that happened in that bread suddenly fed over 5,000 people. And when we surrender our lives to Christ and we are broken in Christ, and we know that the Spirit of God has moved upon us in a powerful, glorious way, and we begin to distribute out from what is in here, suddenly we actually discover it works, and God is at work, and that takes faith. Believe that Christ in you is greater than he that is in this world. And so I close this morning. You may be looking at your life, and you may be thinking to yourself, what am I amongst so many? One man, one woman with God is a majority. 
Sometimes we will refuse to make a spiritual shift because we stay in the natural thinking. But if we can only see the principle of this miracle, present your life to Jesus for his purpose and glory in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. Allow the Lord to break from you everything that needs to go away. Break our hearts, God. Surrender everything to you, even if there's a cause. And then, Lord, fill me with your anointing and power in the Holy Spirit, that the works and miracles can operate through me as I step out and begin to move in the way, God, that you want me to move. We then begin to experience miracles and we begin to experience change. Oh, it's easy, isn't it? It's easy for the church not to really grasp the fact there's thousands around us hungry and almost to want to go, don't get me wrong when I say this, but we, we, we can quite easily get into a mental way of thinking like, well, there's nothing we can do about it. Nothing we can do about it, really. Send them away. Let them go to the other clubs. Let them go to the things in the world. Let them find their entertainment out there. So no, no, you give them something to eat. You give them something to eat. Hallelujah. Place of surrender, place of breaking, and a place of life. Praise God. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together, shall we? Hallelujah. Father, we've been saying that when the Lord, when the supernatural touches the natural, a miracle takes place. And Lord, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus, Father, because Lord, in many ways we sit here and we recognize that we are natural. We think naturally. We operate naturally. We work naturally. And Lord, all around us there are folk, God, that have so many needs, God, that will not be met by the natural man. Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, would so move upon us. Lord, I pray, Lord, today, Father, somebody here in this meeting, God, today, somebody, Lord, in their heart right now is saying, Lord, I surrender to you. I surrender everything, Jesus, to you. And Lord, for that heart, those hearts which are in tune with that, Father, I pray right now, God, that you hear their prayer. And there are those, Lord, who recognize and realize that certain things need to be broken away. Lord, hear, hear their prayer, Lord, I pray. For break from us everything that is not of you. And Father God, also I pray, Lord, today that, Lord, give us this, the faith, Lord, in that surrender, and in that breaking, Lord, in the weeping that will come, the Lord give us the faith to begin to move and believe, God, that what is in us is greater than he that is in the world. Help us, Lord, to begin to distribute life, distribute joy, distribute freedom, distribute miracles. Lord Jesus, help us to distribute you completely and absolutely. And Father, I pray, God, you'll use us right now in the name of Jesus to your glory. Lord, I pray, Lord, over this house. I pray, God, over this venue. I pray, God, that this will be greatly used by you, Father. I pray, Father, that the broken will come in and find healing. I pray, God, that the lost will come in and find salvation. I pray, God, that those who are broken, Lord, will come in here and be made whole in Christ. Amen. I pray, God, that each one of us will be used as ambassadors of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray, God, that the light of your glory will fall and spread from this place out across the whole community. Amen. And Father, I pray, Father, that it is through our willingness to be surrendered and broken, God, you're going to do miracles. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.